हेलो एवरीवन वेलकम बैक टू मई यूट्यूब चैनल अनफॉग विथ डॉक्टर अतहर परवीन इलेक्ट्रोमैग्नेटिक स्पेक्ट्रम इज द रेंज ऑफ फ्रीक्वेंसीज विद इलेक्ट्रोमैग्नेटिक रेडिएशंस अलोंग विद देयर असोसिएटेड वेवलेंथ्स एंड फोटोन एनर्जीज फोटोन एनर्जीज मीन्स ई इज इक्वल टू एच न्यू राइट वेर ई इज द एनर्जी ऑफ द फोटोन एच इज द प्लैंक्स कॉन्स्टेंट एंड न्यू विल बी द फ्रीक्वेंसी ऑफ द फोटोन now these waves of energy are called electromagnetic because they have oscillating electric and magnetic fields this electromagnetic spectrum consists of gamma rays x rays ultraviolet or uv rays infrared rays radio waves and microwaves and electromagnetic waves travel at the speed of light in vacuum that is 3 into 10 to the power 8 meter per second and as they can be polarized we say that electromagnetic waves are transverse in nature now i have this picture which clearly shows how the wavelength of each electromagnetic radiation changes here you can see right from radio waves till gamma rays the wavelength of this electromagnetic uh, radiations decreases now we know that uh, frequency is inversely proportional to wavelength so i can say that when wavelength is decreasing it also means that the frequency is increasing for the electromagnetic radiations in the electromagnetic spectrum here uh, it is very clearly depicted how the radio waves uh, wavelength ranges it ranges from 10200 cm that means uh, the radio waves wavelength can be of the size of a building or it can also be of the size of humans now coming to microwaves the size of the microwaves is around 1 cm which is about the size of a honey bee and the size of infrared radiations is about 10 to the power minus 2 cm that means it is around the size of a pinhead whereas this visible light i mean to say the uh, light which we are able to see the white light or the visible light it is of the size of 10 to the power minus 5 cm the wavelength i'm talking okay now this you can compare to the microbes like protozoans and all the microorganisms then we have the uv rays which have the wavelength of about 10 to the power minus 6 cm which is around the size of a molecules and x rays have a wavelength of 10 to the power minus 8 cm which is around the size of an atom and gamma rays have the wavelength which ranges from 10 to the power minus 10 to 10 to the power minus 12 cm which is about the size of atomic nuclei now this type of a question can be asked in hstr 2023 based on electromagnetic waves the question is which of the following rays are not electromagnetic waves now just now we have saw in the electromagnetic spectrum gamma rays heat rays and x rays are belonging to electromagnetic spectrum why did i say that the heat rays belong to electromagnetic spectrum because heat rays are nothing but the infrared rays actually the infrared radiation is popularly known as heat radiation now you agree with me right that uh, heat rays also belong to electromagnetic spectrum so which one is the odd one out from the four options that is uh, beta rays right because gamma rays and infrared rays and x rays they belong to electromagnetic radiation i mean to say the electromagnetic spectrum whereas beta rays we did not find them in the electromagnetic spectrum now what else can be asked for example another question can be like this electromagnetic waves are there are four options transverse longitudinal may be longitudinal or transverse neither longitudinal nor transverse so of course the answer to this question is that electromagnetic waves are transverse in nature because they can be polarized okay longitudinal waves cannot be polarized an example for longitudinal waves can be sound waves 
whereas electromagnetic waves are transverse waves. I have animations to make you all understand what are actually the transverse waves and longitudinal waves. Here in the picture you can see that the particles are moving at right angles in the direction of the wave. So these type of waves where particles are moving at right angles to the direction of the wave, that type of waves are known as transverse waves. And here in this figure you can see that the particles are moving in the same direction as the wave is moving. This type of wave where particles are moving in the same direction along with the wave are known as longitudinal waves. By chance if they ask a tough question, the question can be like this. The question is, when an electromagnetic wave moves from one medium to another medium, then which quantity will not change? Which quantity will not change? The four options are wavelength, speed, frequency and none of these. Actually, as a wave travels from one medium to another medium, there may be some increase in the amplitude or there may be some decrease in the amplitude of a wave or the velocity of the wave. It depends upon the nature of the medium and the change in the velocity will result in changes in the wavelength of the wave. Whereas the frequency of a wave is characterized by the source of the wave. So it will not change when the ray will go from one medium to another medium. So the answer to this question will be frequency because wavelength and speed will change when a wave, the electromagnetic wave moves from one medium to another medium whereas the frequency will not change when it moves from one medium to another medium because the frequency of a wave is characterized by the source of the wave. And also we told that the frequency is inversely proportional to wavelength, right? So when we have a, a whip goyer of the visible light, we know that white light can be split into whip goyer, right? So when we have this whip goyer, we can clearly understand that the wavelength in a whip goyer increases from violet to red color. And when we know that frequency is inversely proportional to the wavelength, it is understood that the frequency will decrease from violet to red color. Okay. Now, when we talk about the frequency and wavelength, we can easily understand that in an electromagnetic spectrum, the wavelength is very much higher for radio waves, whereas it is the smallest for gamma rays. And talking about the applications of electromagnetic waves, to start with visible light, of course, it makes things able to be seen. We cannot see anything in darkness, right? We are able to see anything only in the presence of light. So that is our visible light. And this is the main importance of the visible light that it makes things able to be seen. Then we have this radio waves which are used to broadcast radio and television. We have microwaves which are used in cooking, in telephone, in radar and in many other signals. Along with that we have uh, this mobile phones which are being used only because of the microwaves. Then we have uh, infrared rays which transmit heat from sun and uh, also fire and also some radiators maybe and also these infrared radiations are absorbed and they are re-radiated by greenhouse gases. Then talking about ultraviolet radiations, they are absorbed by the skin and they are used in fluorescent tubes. And of course, X-rays, though we all know their application, they are used to view inside the uh, bodies and inside the objects. And the gamma rays, they are used in medicine for killing cancer cells. Okay, so I hope you understand the importance of this uh, diagram because any multiple choice question can be asked from these details. Okay, now coming back to the greenhouse gases. First of all, what is a greenhouse effect? A greenhouse effect is a process 
that occurs when gases in earth's atmosphere are getting trapped by the sun's heat now because of this heat the earth will become much warmer right than it could be without an atmosphere correct so this is known as greenhouse effect now this greenhouse effect is one of the things that makes the earth more comfortable place for us to live and the greenhouse gases which are present in the atmosphere they absorb more of the infrared radiations when you compare with the ultraviolet rays x rays and radio waves so this makes the infrared radiations very very important radiations in terms of the greenhouse effect so this question was asked in hstr 2015 the question is the electromagnetic radiation which is the cause for greenhouse effect on earth is the options are ultraviolet rays radio waves microwaves and infrared rays now if you have watched this short class carefully then you must be able to answer this question so please try to answer this question below in the comment section okay i'll be happy to see your answers and if you like my work please do like this video and also share among other hstr aspirants and also if you have not subscribed still please don't forget to subscribe this channel for more such classes based on hstr okay thank you all the best bye